Hello and welcome to another video from Dazatron's Diorama Llama. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how to make an impact crater diorama. So the figure you see before you is Dmitry Maximov, and he is a character from Vampire Savior, which was a popular arcade game in the kind of mid 90s, also known as Darkstalkers over here in the UK and in the US. So this figure is made by Storm Collectibles. It was the first figure I owned from that company. Fantastic articulation, really good build. Um, Love the sculpt of the character. And uh, perfect really for the make because he kind of just lends itself to the idea that this guy's going to land and create this kind of massive impact. You know, and it's the kind of thing that you would see in lots of manga and anime, kind of thing, Dragon Ball Z, uh, you're bound to see an impact crater. So perfect for kind of action figures. Uh, think of like Marvel Legends, you know, Hawk Smash, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to start with a piece of styrofoam, roughly around two centimetres. Um, it doesn't really matter too much about the size or thickness of the styrofoam. So use whatever you have at hand. So I'm just going to place my action figure so I can get a little bit of an idea where about the, the impact would be. So in an impact crater, they're often kind of shown as kind of these circles. So I'm just using a Sharpie. You could use a felt tip pen just to mark out roughly where these circles would be. Now, I quite like the idea of having this as kind of a, a corner display. But, you know, you can make this whatever shape you want, really. So I'm just leaving a little bit of an edge there so that the crater itself doesn't go right up to the edge of the, um, the diorama itself. So I'm just going to go over these a little bit darker and try and leave a little bit of a gap between the two circles. Now don't worry if you are intimidated by drawing circles. Obviously you could use something to draw around, but it really doesn't have to be perfect. At the end of the day, we're going to, or going to distress, if you like, the top of this. So it's going to be all kind of cracked. So again, that, that's, those circles don't have to be perfect. So I'm using a electric foam cutter just because I find it really easy um, in terms of um, cutting styrofoam. Just be aware of the size of the cutter. Um, if, it's, if the styrofoam is too wide, it won't fit um, within the wire. If you're using a tabletop cutter, then you're not going to have that problem. But you could also use a knife. So if you haven't got a styrofoam cutter, don't worry. What I would say, though, is you really need some sort of um, protective gear, um, like a face mask, but like a proper face mask, um, just so that the fumes, you're not going to inhale those fumes, because they really are toxic. Um, I didn't really have enough information when I was making my early videos. So it's really important just be aware you do not want to inhale the fumes. Um, it can really affect your nervous system. It can cause depression, all sorts of problems internally. So don't put yourself at risk. Make sure you are wearing that protective gear and there's lots of ventilation around you. So I'm just slicing the end of this off. So I've got a bit more room to kind of play and get the kind of shape that I need. I'm also cutting at a slight angle, just because I think that looks better. And then with this little piece of an off cut, I'm just going to practice trying to get as fine a slice of styrofoam as I can. Um, this will make more sense in a moment. Um, and I really would encourage you to have a practice at this rather than going straight into your kind of actual final piece. So just trying to keep the cutter as steady as I can. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit wobbly, 
but you want that give and that bend and um, that would be really important later on in this make so here's the scary bit i'm going to have a go directly on the diorama base probably talking less than half a centimeter so maybe three or four millimeters in terms of the thickness if it's too thick you're not going to get that give that you need and if it's too thin it's well it's probably not going to have enough strength to support it really so you always get a little bit of a wobble well i do anyway when i'm using the uh, cutter and any movement can make a big difference so do be very careful and as i said do practice this So that wasn't too bad, but you'll notice there on the end, I have managed to kind of cut into the surface. That's not a big deal because again, we're going to um, distress the surface. So it's going to have lots of cracks in it anyway. So you really won't notice if you do end up doing what I've done here and end up cutting through the top. And the point of this top layer is to kind of create the impression of tarmac. So I'm just using a sharp pencil, you could use a compass, anything that's going to push through that top layer of styrofoam, just so we've got kind of a registration underneath, so we know that the circles on top and the circles underneath are going to be exactly the same, or certainly near enough. So I'm just pushing in a little bit heavier into those circles, or should I say into those dots or those holes, so I know where to place my circles. Now you could file this down like I've done. You probably don't need to, if I'm being honest. Um, so that's up to you. Because the ridges in this layer are going to line up with the ridges in the top layer, you probably don't need to file it down. So I'm just going to join up those kind of dots or holes that I made again with a sharpie or a felt tip pen and again it doesn't have to be perfect you won't actually see um, the edges of these circles so don't worry too much about that so yeah just use whatever you've got at hand so a stone um i actually forgot what this is called my mind's gone blank uh, but this is for, you know, when you're kind of crushing up kind of herbs or spices. Um, it's just a really good tool for kind of trying to create that indent, which is what we want. So this is the crater itself that we're trying to make. And because the, um, the high density kind of polystyrene that we're using or styrofoam that we're using is quite soft, you can actually push it in reasonably well. Don't worry about the cracks because, again, we're going to cover this up. So I'm just trying to see how well this lines up with the action figure that I'm using. And that's really important because if you're using a Marvel Legends figure or, you know, I don't know, something like a 12-inch figure, and then, of course, your base is going to be a different size. So, yeah, I'm not too happy with um, the depth of these craters, so I want them to be a little bit deeper. So I'm just using the curved edge of a hand file just to kind of pull away the styrofoam and just make it a little bit deeper. I don't want to go, obviously go all the way through. And now I'm going to put my kind of tarmac layer, if you like, on top and just see how that works. If it's got enough give to kind of create that effect that I'm looking for. So you just need a bit of kind of card. That's what the uh, the brie is there for. So that was from Christmas. And then we've got our bamboo skewers. Again, use whatever you've got at hand, a lollipop stick, um, whatever it might be. So I'm using Gorilla Glue Epoxy Glue. So this comes in kind of two parts. And it just needs mixing to kind of get it to set. Hence why I've got this kind of skewer just to give it a good stir. I mean, you can pretty much use any glue. Um, well, certainly most glues. Um, but what I would say is just check that it's okay to use on the styrofoam because some glues will melt the styrofoam. So it is worth checking. 
So notice I've spread that all over the top surface or the bottom surface. And then I've placed kind of my tarmac layer over the top. And I'm just using some weights just to kind of hold it down. You only really need to leave this for about half an hour. But you do need something that's just going to kind of push it as far as it would go. So kind of rocks are really useful for this. Now you can see there's lots of kind of cracks. It looks a bit messy. Um, some of it actually hasn't stuck down as well as like I would have hoped it would have done. But we can kind of try and fix all of that later. So the next step is to actually make it look like this piece of ground um, has been impacted. So we want to kind of create all these kind of stress lines and these cracks. So I'm using a craft knife, um, a scalpel would be even better. Just you want something really sharp and you are cutting all the way through that top layer. And that's why those initial cracks that we made really aren't important because they all add to it. Notice I'm using a stone just to try and kind of push all of those cuts or cut areas into the indent. So it kind of holds that shape. And so I'm just working from the middle and I'm just creating these kind of lines. Think of kind of broken glass. Those lines, you don't want them to be straight. You want them to kind of be kind of angular. And I'm just trying to use the stone again just to try and push that down and try and get it to fix. It was a little bit stubborn, um, this styrofoam, to try and get it to all stick down how I wanted it to. So often if you've seen pictures of an impact crater, you get these areas where if you like the ground is kind of sticking up. And so it almost kind of creates an edge around this kind of circular kind of shape. Notice again, I don't want a smooth circle. I want it to look like it's irregular and it's all cracked. So I'm starting at different places. Um, moving in different directions. So we've got, you know, parts jutting out. And so just kind of peel up that top layer so it looks like it's kind of sticking up. So I'm also now doing the same thing to the rest of the surface. So you can see how the, the impact is kind of spread out. And notice too that all the cracks are joining up. And that's really important. So the next thing I want to do is to make the edge of my base look more like a kind of a rock face. So again, a longer blade is useful for this. So a craft knife would work if you've got like an extendable craft knife. This is a floristry knife, which is usually my tool of choice. And if you've watched this or watched my channel for a while now, you'll have seen lots of videos where I make rock faces. And just to show you how easy that is, it always looks more complicated than what it actually is. There's no kind of real, I suppose, technique for this as such, apart from just moving different directions, moving different angles, don't worry about it too much. And you'll just find it works. Um, where it tends not to work is if you kind of try to make it too uniform. So if your angles are all the same, so if you're moving your cuts in the same direction, that's where it tends to look a bit fake. So as long as you go in different directions, it will work. So here's my kind of, I suppose, my test, yeah, to see how it looks. And I'm quite happy with that. And I've also added, as you can see there, just some little off cuts, some kind of triangular pieces. Again, not perfectly triangular. You want them to look like bits of concrete, bits of tarmac, bits of rock. And then I've just used the epoxy glue just to kind of stick them in place and again, it just really kind of elevates that impact idea. So on that picture there, you can see all those tiny little cracks. 
So I just want to add those in as well. So I've added all the larger cracks that are coming out from the center, but now I'm adding these smaller cracks. And with these, you don't have to go all the way through that top layer of styrofoam. This is more like surface decoration, really. So I'm just kind of scratching into that surface. Again, different directions, because that's kind of the way it looks if you look at photographs. Some of them might join up, some of them might not. Now I was considering adding a kind of a wall at the back and again maybe putting a hole in the wall to show even more impact but I decided against that in the end mainly due to space but you could certainly you know think about doing that yourself but I'm not happy with that corner so I just want to keep the overall shape of this base really irregular I don't want it to have a, a neat or smooth finish so I'm really jabbing in the knife here. I'm purposely not sharpening the knife. And you can see I've just broken that off. An instant rock texture when you do that. So if you do struggle with kind of creating your own rock texture, literally just snap the styrofoam. Obviously put some kind of um, cut into it in places. So you're kind of guiding where it will snap. Um, but you've got instant texture there. So I'm pretty happy with the way that's looking around the edges. I'm happy with the surface now. And so it's really a case of kind of emphasizing all of that detail with the paintwork. So you can use model paints, which is the kind of the small bottles, which is like thinner paint. Or for this really, just because it's the base layer and just regular kind of artist acrylic would do. But please don't buy expensive acrylics for this. You really don't need it. So I'm just using a thick brush. I've watered the acrylic down a little bit and I'm just pushing it into all those kind of the nooks and crannies, all that detail. And it's really important because this is a three-dimensional sculpture that you kind of look around the sculpture, move it in different angles, hold it under a light and you'll really kind of see then the bits that you've missed. Um, it often looks, when you, when you look at something when you've painted it, it can look complete until you kind of move it around. So do try and get into, again, all of those areas that you may have missed on your first layer. So I'm using um, Mod Podge here. So this is kind of a, a PVA glue, and you could use regular PVA glue. I'm just going to add a little bit of black acrylic to the PVA, give that a good mix. And basically, I... When I glued the tarmac layer to the, you know, the base, I didn't use enough glue. So I keep finding little bits that are peeling up and have not quite stuck down how I'd like them to. So this is kind of my rescue attempt, really, um, just using some of that PVA and the black paint um, underneath some of those bits that are peeling away. If you use enough glue in the first place, then you won't need to do this. You could use PVA glue to stick that top layer. The only reason I didn't do that was because of time. It, it takes PVA probably a good 24 hours, if not longer, to fully cure. So I just wanted something quicker than that. So yeah, it's up to you how you do that or what glue you use. So I'm just adding a little bit of black to white. I don't want pure white. It tends to be a little bit too harsh. So you just want to kind of tone that down. And I'm pulling away as much white from my brush as I can. Again, this is regular artist acrylic. I tend to like the thicker paint for the dry brush technique. And I'm just brushing that over really loosely. I'm not pressing down heavy just all over that kind of top surface. Then when you do this, it looks a bit odd. It looks a bit amateurish um, because it almost feels a bit too much white as if, you know, there's a bit of frost on the ground or something. But because we're going to add a, a wash layer over the top of this, that would tone it back down. So don't worry if you feel like you're adding too much paint. We can tone it back. So I'm actually using the Warhammer or miniature paints now. These are the um, the Vallejo paints. 
So just a little, little squeeze from the bottle and lots of water, a big thick brush. And then we're just gonna tone back all of that kind of, those highlights that we added. You probably won't see that too well on this video because obviously there's a light above this. So the light as well is creating kind of um, these highlights. So I'm just adding a little bit of light brown to this kind of black mixture that I've already got. So don't worry about that. And I just want there to be um, a difference between the kind of the base layer, so kind of the, the rocky kind of formation and the kind of tarmac area, hence why I'm using the light brown. So really quickly, don't be too precious about it. Just going to keep that all around the edges. Obviously, try not to get it onto the tarmac itself. Now, I wasn't too happy with the colour, so I'm just going to add a little bit of burnt sienna, which is kind of a warmer brown or reddish brown. And again, I'm just going to brush that over the top. And that's just going to add a little bit of warmth to that. So I suppose it kind of looks like mud or rocks underneath that tarmac. So yeah, I'm, I'm actually happy with the overall finish of this. And I like those little pieces of rock that are kind of sticking up. I think that kind of adds to it. And so here we go. Here is the finished diorama base. Um, hopefully you can get some good ideas from this. Um, as I said, this is a base for beginners. Don't be intimidated by it. You can't go wrong with this because of the amount of kind of cracks that are in there. If you make a mistake, it would actually probably add to the overall effect. So really don't be put off by that. So, yeah, if you've enjoyed watching this video, please do leave a like and a comment. I love to hear from people, especially if you're making your own or having a go. It really encourages me to make more of these videos. And here is Dimitri making his entrance, if you like. And, um, yeah, I'll see you again in the near future. Bye for now.